everyone. Welcome to Total Story Clarity. Now, today we're going to be covering three types of stories. This class may last an hour, may last a little less, a little more, um, but there's probably going to have to be a part two because stories are just so cool. Of, of all three of the classes on clarity I'm going to be giving, um, whether it's the, the hook or the story or the offer, stories are the funnest for sure. Stories are the most fun. Right? We, all, we all love a good story. In fact, post your favorite Post your favorite story in the uh, in the comments. Curious to see what your favorite story or your favorite movie, even that's easier. Favorite book, whatever. Um, there's just three types of stories that we're going to be covering here tonight for the purpose of allowing you to get your point across a lot easier, and of course, to allow you to sell more things a lot easier as well. So the three types of stories we're going to be covering. Uh, we'll get to those in just a sec, but um, we got to ask ourselves why stories? Why stories? Like why don't we just pick up a, an object or show people our ebook and tell them to buy it? Or why can't we just list off all the facts, the benefits, right? Like you want people to go vegan or you want people to start sleeping. So you just naturally just let, listing off all these different facts about it. Right. And that works for some people telling, telling someone facts works for some people, but usually it only works for them if they're already emotionally sold on it. So really facts tell, but stories sell stories are so cool because they allow us to get people to come up with the answers for themselves. And that's what people love. We love coming up with the answers for ourselves, right? Like type, type a yes if you love feeling, feeling like a genius. Type a yes if you love feeling like a genius. I know I love to feel like a genius. And when someone's telling me a story or when I'm watching a movie or reading a book, the whole time we're always trying to figure it out, right? Like what's gonna happen next? What's most gonna happen next? We love to like solve these little problems that, that are posed in, in stories and it's really fun it's really exciting it's like a game almost hearing hearing a story is almost like playing a game you're like like what's gonna happen next what's gonna happen, what's gonna happen next so by getting good at telling stories you can engage people in these games and it's really really fun and you can make sure your people are having like a lot of fun um and then uh i'm not sure why it's, i have to admit people every time there's like someone in the waiting room i have to accept them that's weird but yeah um so telling stories is like kind of like playing a game with people. It's like, it's a really fun way of, of engaging with people. And um, it's a lot easier to then sell your thing after you've told them an awesome story. You've gotten them, you've gotten them emotionally engaged. So in the last class, we talked about offers. And an offer is something that you really present, you really want to present ideally after telling a story, a short story. It doesn't even, it doesn't even be a long story. It takes an hour to tell. Like these short stories can last anywhere from a minute to 15 minutes or so, right? Typically even 15 minutes is quite long, but a minute to five minutes is like a great length of a little short story here that, that um, I'm going to be showing you. So why stories at the end of the day, it's because we love them. We love them. We love stories. Humans have been, have been using stories before that we could use words, right? We did cave paintings and we drew in the sand and we just like, we, we saw, we saw things happen and, a way for us to portray the story to someone or to wait for us to portray what happened to someone is to tell them a story. Like, Hey, I was out walking yesterday and I was picking berries like I do every day. And then this freaking beautiful woman walked by. I've never seen her before, but she looked over at me and we held eye contact for a bit and it was just like love at first sight. And so I, I start walking towards her and then out of nowhere, this big freaking grizzly bear runs after me and starts chasing that, me and I never saw that woman ever again right so I told you a little story and it was like it made me laugh or maybe you thought it was a horrible story whatever but point is I told you a little story nonetheless right there and it was so much easier to keep your attention rather than telling you like um I pick berries berries are healthy I like women when women make eye contact with me I like when I see bear I run like that's so boring, telling these little facts. Right? But if I tell them the story, it's so fun. And then, so after I tell that story, I could say something like, so I ran away from that bear. I never got to see that woman again. And that's when I made the vow. That's when I made the decision to never be afraid of bears again, to never back down. That's why I started training martial arts and, and uh, Taekwondo and Muay Thai and wrestling, got into bodybuilding. So I wanted to be able to defend myself uh, and of course, my, my, my family against bears in the future. And so 
um, I started getting to martial arts training, jujitsu, you know, martial arts, pulled out my black belt. And then I um, just recently, I was actually picking berries again up this mountain, the very same mountain actually where I saw that woman. And then another bear came, but this time I didn't back down. This time I was with my child and when the bear came this time, I put my child behind me and I ran up to the bear and I tackled it and I was wrestling the bear for like 15 minutes. And eventually I pinned the bear down, the bear tapped out. And uh, my, my son said, okay, dad, he's tapping, he's tapping, stop. And so I got up and then the bear um, walked away in defeat. And uh, that's, just, that's just my life. That's just the kind of life I live. I wrestle bears, right? So I told you a story and now kind of, and now kind of got you like, ooh, Taekwondo, martial arts, like self-defense, that's pretty cool. Right, so now I can say, and so this is why I teach martial arts. And if you'd like to join my class, I'm actually offering a free training class on martial arts this Tuesday at 6 p.m. Would you like to come? Who would like to come to martial arts training after I just told you that story? And by the way, that story was not planned at all. That was complete freestyle. But um, I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure uh, some of you want to come to martial arts now because of that cool story. Am I, am I right or am I, uh, or am I right? Hopefully I'm right. Hopefully that story sold you on martial arts. Rather than me saying, rather than me saying, hey, just come to my martial arts training. You should come. It's happening tonight at 5 p.m. Right? Rather than just saying that, I tell you the epic story, right, about how I was picking berries. I saw this woman and then a bear came and got in the way and I ran away. Right? Samars has definitely captivated me on you as a person. <laughs> cool, cool. Well, yeah, it's going to captivate people on me as a person or it's going to captivate the people on martial arts or whatever, but it's a lot easier to, to get people to, to get to know you more as well. It's, it's fun to tell stories. And then one of the benefits is that people just like get to get to know you more, get to get to um, get to like you as a character, right? Because typically when we watch movies, you don't like a movie where you hate the main character. Every movie that you love, it's because you love the main character. And you love the main character because they're going through the story. So this is why stories, okay? So there's a lot behind it. But now that we've set the stage, let's get into the three types of stories that I talked about, okay? There's many types of stories, but these are the three types I like to use the most for selling. Selling on Instagram, selling on YouTube, selling in person, um, selling on webinars. I'll, I'll use these across the board. These are the, these are, these are the three types three types that I like to use. So here we go. The three F's, the big aha, and the hero's journey. Okay. Now the three F's, any guesses on what the three F's are? Anyone take a guess on what the three F's are? I'll give you, I'll give you a minute. Type in the chat. What do you think the three F's are? I'll give you a hint. They all start with an F. They're all one word. What are the three F's? Any, any ideas, any guesses? If you have no clue, just type no clue. I'd rather you at least engage and say no clue than um, say nothing at all. I got to make sure you guys are alive here. No clue, says Alex. No clue what the three Fs are. Okay. Well, cool thing about the three Fs is that this is like a really awesome way of having conversations with people. Like you can use this technique to have conversations with people on Instagram, in the YouTube comments, with your girlfriend, with your parents, with someone you just met at the grocery store like I did the other day. Um, so check it out. Here, here are the three Fs. I'll give you a couple like case studies of when I've actually used them um, to be successful. So check it out. The three Fs. First one is feel. Next one is felt. And the third one is found. You might want to write those down, by the way. Feel, felt, found. Those are the three Fs. And this is so cool because the one, when you use it, you typically use it when someone disagrees with you about something or puts up an objection about something. So let's say you uh, want someone to eat more fruits and vegetables, okay? And you tell them, you're like, hey, yeah, I'm a, I'm a vegan, I'm a raw foodist, I eat a lot of fresh fruits and vegetables. And then the person comes back at you and says, oh, I could never do that because I love meat and cheese. Has, has this ever happened to anyone before? Just type a yes if this has ever happened to you before. I'll make sure I'm not alone here. Has that ever happened to you before? Someone finds out you're vegan or vegetarian 
countless times, right? Okay, cool. So it's definitely relatable. So then they say, oh, I could never do that. As if you ask them to do it, right? You're just telling them about yourself. But sure enough, they like to interject. Everyone loves talking about themselves. So keep that in mind. Everyone loves talking about themselves. And this whole feel, felt, found thing, you can really tap into that. You can really take advantage of the fact that everyone loves talking about themselves. Okay? So here we go. The way, the way you'd react to that or the way you'd counter that or the way you'd use a story in that regard to actually help them eat more fresh fruits and vegetables rather than saying, oh, you shouldn't eat meat and dairy. It's really toxic. And you start spewing all these facts at them, right? Like dairy is, uh, the dairy industry is horrible for the cows and meat is you know, going to cause cancer. And you start telling all these facts, right? But it doesn't work. That never works. And it's so, it drains you as well. It's like not fun to tell them that stuff. And it's not fun for them to hear it either. Like they feel like they're getting schooled and it doesn't, it doesn't feel good. So the, an excellent way to do it. And this happened by the way, the other day at the store with me, I was at the store, girl saw me eat buying all this fruit and she's like, Oh my God, why do you only buy fruit? And I was like, well, I just eat a lot of fruit. You know, it's like all I eat. And she's like, Oh, I could never do that. I need meat. I need cheese. And rather than me saying, Oh no, like you'd be much better off. if You just ate fruit. Screw the other stuff. I said, I understand how you feel. I totally get it. The cheese tastes good. The meat, you know, probably helps you feel strong. Um, you got a lot of variety, right? I totally understand how you feel. In fact, I felt the same way. I used to eat a ton of meat, tons of cheese. I used to love cheese. Uh, chicken, chicken strips were my favorite food to eat. Chicken strips and honey mustard. I freaking loved it. Um, in fact, I used to say that like, hey, all you stupid vegetarians, like for every animal you don't eat, I'm going to eat five, right? So I, I totally get how you feel and I felt the same way. And what I found was that when I actually looked up all these successful athletes in the Olympics, they were all eating a plant-based whole food, a whole food plant-based diet. And, and what I found was that actually the people who lived the longest, the people who actually had no risk of diabetes, no risk of heart attacks, they were all actually eating a plant-based diet. And so I gave it a try, you know, albeit a bit reluctantly, I gave it a try. And, and what I found was that I just felt so good. My, my acne cleared up. I lost 30 pounds. Um, I got off my diabetes medication, blah, blah, blah. Right? So that's a cool story, right? Going from, hey, I understand how you feel. This gets you to um, validate how they're feeling. I understand how you feel, Alex, thinking that this is brilliant. I totally understand how you feel. You probably think, wow, this is brilliant, man. Like, I never thought about that before. This is, this is going to come, gonna come in handy real good. In fact, I felt the same way when I first heard it. These three apps, I was like, man, this is brilliant. This is, I'm going to use this all the time. This is genius. Um, and what I found was that when I actually did use it, it was terrific. Like the results were amazing. People were so responsive. And so as opposed to going up to people and telling them what to do, I just, you know, I validated how they first felt. And then I related with them by telling them how I felt the same way. And then I showed them my, 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 I celebrated and I showed them what I found. So we go through, uh, uh, you validate, you relate, and you celebrate. Uh, Samar says, the first two are exactly how I like to respond, but the found part had been missing. Yeah, the found part's awesome. The found part is so cool. And you want to you wanna start off by saying, and what I found was not but. So I'm with my students at my past retreat, um, oops, I had a retreat a few weeks ago, and they, we were practicing this a lot. And a lot of them would say, I understand how you feel. I felt the same way. But what I found was, and you never want to start, I mean, ideally, you never want to start a sentence with but. Because when you start a sentence with but, it kind of just like, degrades everything you said before that it kind of just moots everything you said before that it's like it's like if i see um if i see if i see you in the store dude i'd be like oh alex you got a great haircut dude but and as soon as i say but you're like oh wow like you, you don't care that i just compliment you on your hair anymore because the butt came but if i said hey alex you got great hair and i think if you wore a blue collar you'd look even better rather than saying hey alex you got great hair but you should probably wear a blue collar. So using the word and is so much more agreeable. It's so much more, has so much more flow to it. When you say but, it totally kills everything you had just said. It just ruins the castle you just built with the person. Okay? So I understand how you feel. I felt the same way. 
And what I found was that like, so the other day, true story, I was wanting to go to the lake with my friend, jump in a cold lake. I give her a call. I say, hey, Hannah, you want to come to the lake with me and some friends? Because we like to go with a group of people. And I know she's like to go to the lake. And so she says, oh, sounds cool, but I'm sick. So I can't do it. What do I say? Oh, I, and what I was tempted to say was, no, come on, Hannah. Don't be a little bee. You should just come. Don't, don't be scared. Like, it's good for you. Come on, let's go. Just facts, 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 right? It's good for you. It's going to boost your immune system. It's going to help you get over the sickness. It's going to blah, 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 I right? totally like not even validate how she was feeling. But she told me that she was feeling sick. So I said, hey, Hannah, listen, I totally understand how you feel. You probably want to cuddle up in bed with your boyfriend, get all cozy, drink some hot tea, right? You probably, you're thinking that, hey, the cold might make you sicker. I totally understand how you feel. In fact, I felt the same way. Whenever I used to get sick, I wish my mom made me hot soup. I'd just go sit in a hot shower, go to the sauna, and just stay super, super cozy. And yeah, I, I get it. And I used to feel the exact same way. Um, but what I, and, sorry, and, not but, and what I found was that by going into a cold body of water when I wasn't feeling my best, it actually made me feel so alive. It made me feel so alive. It boosted my immune system to such a high degree that I not only didn't get sick, I, mean, I didn't feel sick anymore, but I also never got sick later that year either because I stay, stayed consistent with it. And, and what I found was that the more research I did, the more it said that, hey, doing cold actually boosts your immune system way more than going in the hot. And, and, you, and you know what Hannah said? It's all I said to her. I just told her what I found. But you know what she said after? She said, wow, really? Okay, what time are you going? I was like, oh my God, three Fs, crushed it. So good. So that's the three Fs, everybody. Any questions about the three Fs or can we move on? If we can move on, just type, uh, just type move on. Don't forget to sip some water, Ted, take care of your throat. Yeah, good call. I will uh, sip some water. Move on, okay. We're gonna move on. I'll sip some water um, as soon as we get into this next one here. This one's called the big aha. My big aha right my big aha right now is I can drink some water. One sec. Take care of that throat. Alrighty. Okay. Yeah, so you typically take for granted how much of a drain on your throat speaking nonstop is. Because normally throughout the day you only have conversations with friends. And they're talking and you're talking, you go back and forth. But when you're the one doing all the talking, it's like the difference between like, you know, doing a couple pull-ups and then trying to like hang on the pull-up bar for an hour for you hanging off your dear life, trying not to drop. It's a bit different. Okay, so the big aha. This story is really cool. This is, this is the story that you want to use when you were trying to make a point and you can use the three F's when you're trying to make a point as well. But this is another technique where, you know, because you can't use feel felt found every single time you interact with somebody. It's like, you know, you can't just like every time I get on the phone with Hannah, Hey Hannah, I understand how you feel. I felt the same way, blah, blah, blah. Right. Um, and it, it sometimes it just doesn't really feel as good to use the feel the three F's in certain situations. Um, like maybe like when you're writing a book or something, you're not going to say like, hey, reader, I understand how you feel. I felt the same way. So the big aha is where you can, you can use this in like your webinar scripts, maybe in like a YouTube video um, and in your books, okay, in your eBooks. So the big aha, this is where you let people know how you got to where you're at now by using the path that you want them to take. Because at the end of the day, you're trying to sell people on the path, but they just want the result. Does that make sense? You're trying to sell them on the vegan diet. They just want to lose weight. You're trying to sell them on your fitness program. They just want to look ripped. You're trying to sell them on your relationship course. They're just trying to have a happy marriage. So the big aha, the purpose of this 
is to sell them on the path by letting them know about where you're at now because of you going on that path. Does that make sense? Type a yes if that makes sense. Type a not so sure if you're not so sure. Yes, okay, cool, awesome, love it, love it, love it. Okay, not, not sure, okay. Well, we're gonna get into this and if it still doesn't make sense by the end, you let me know. So there's three parts to the big aha. And the and, uh, aha is really like your big epiphany, like ah, like you, you tell the story of like when it first clicked for you. Because there was a time there was a time in your life when vegan diet didn't make sense. There was a time in your life when working out just seemed stupid. There was a time in your life when you believed that girls were gross and they had cooties, right? And there was also a time in your life, there was a moment, you have to think back, it can be difficult for sure, but you think back to a time when it, when it clicked for you that girls actually weren't gross, they were actually beautiful. There was a moment where it clicked for you when a vegan diet wasn't so restrictive and, and and hard to do when it was actually quite easy to do. There was a time for you when, you know, you went from thinking that drugs were okay to smoke every now and then to then believing that like, hey, I don't want to smoke any weed whatsoever. There was a moment when it clicked for you. And so this big aha is all about remembering when that moment was and trying to, we're trying to recreate that moment for people. Okay. So when you, when you do create, recreate that moment for people, the goal is to have them have that same aha that you had. Because when you recreate the story, when you walk them through the story of how you got to your big aha, if you do a good enough job of telling the story, they're going to have that big aha as well. Because they're going to be relating to you and, going and seeing the world through your lens as you tell that story. So when your character in the story, which is you, has that big aha moment, it's going to click for them as well, hopefully. Okay? So there's three parts to the big aha. There's the brutal before, the divine discovery, and the now wow. Now, I'm gonna get you guys to write in the, in the uh, chat box there, your brutal before, before you discovered um, something. Okay, first, first tell me what you discovered and, and, and what you wanna help people with. Write, write that in the chats. I'm curious to know, what do you actually wanna help people with? And then we'll get to the Brutal Before Divine Discovery now as it relates to that. Okay. So I'll use the example of making money online. Okay. So I'll type in the chat my Brutal Before. I was broke, making $6 an hour. Okay. I was broke, making $6 an hour. That was my Brutal Before as it relates to making money online, right? That was my brutal before. I was broke making $6 an hour online. That's a very brief brutal before. Now, typically you're gonna, go, you're gonna go into a lot more detail on this, but we're just trying to get some bullet points here. So this is as it relates to making money online. So what was your brutal before as it relates to what you wanna sell? Now, what, with what you wanna help people with, All right? So last class we talked about you know, you're getting clear on your offer. Well, what, what is, was your offer trying to help people with? Uh, so Ahmed says, um, you want to help people with technology, fixing phone and computer, helping people get clear on the mindset. Okay, cool. Now, what was your brutal before as it relates to that? Okay. So Mars says, from the web. Whoa, I don't need you Google. Okay. Samar so says, uh, too many things. Let's go transition to vegan. Okay, brutal before, I had severe IBS since I was seven years old. Okay, awesome. Cool. Alex says, I was sick and my meds were killing me. Brutal. Brutal, okay? That's a brutal before. Now, that's a key piece to your story. And a lot of people skip that part of the story. What do they do instead? They say, you should eat a vegan diet. You should get off meds. But they forget the brutal before part of their story. And by you telling me, Alex, hey, man, I was sick and my meds were killing me, that alone is a powerful enough story for me to think, yeah, you know what? I'm going to get off my meds too, right? And Samar telling me like, hey, I, I had severe IBS since I was seven years old. That makes me think like, hey, like there's got to be a way to fix this. Like I need to fix it. But Samar never said like, you should get rid of your IBS. It's totally possible. You can do it, man. 
It was never like that. So I was just like, I had severe IBS. That brutal before. And by me telling you, look, look, I was broke making $6 an hour. That alone paints a picture of like how my life was, right? So brutal before. That's the first part of the story. Second part is the divine discovery, okay? This is when you discovered what you discovered. So this is where you insert what you discovered. So I was broke making $6 an hour. And then I discovered a way to make profits online or then i discovered then then i discovered that profits were were better than wages because that's really what i discovered i'm watching a youtube video about that i discovered that profits were better than wages big turning point in my life i remember that clearly actually i remember that day clearly I discovered that profits were better than wages up until that point, you know, I was making six dollars an hour, and my wage is horrible. And I go on uh, YouTube, and I see this guy talking about profits being better than wages. You got to focus on profits. And I was like, from that moment on, man, I made a vow to figure out how to make them profits. That was my discovery. And this discovery is what you need the other person to believe as well. You need them to, to believe this as well, because if they don't believe it, they're not going to buy your product. If they don't believe your divine discovery, they're not going to end up buying your product. So for example, for Alex, if they don't believe they could heal their body and mind through knowledge, then they're not going to buy what Alex has to sell. If someone doesn't believe in removing meat and eggs from the diet, they're not going to buy what Samara has to sell. They have to believe in removing the meat and eggs from the diet. Okay. So this is where the now wow comes in. Okay, so you painted the brutal before. Your life sucks. People like feel sorry for you. They're like, wow, that really paints a vivid picture. It gets them feeling emotionally empathetic. Okay, humans are very empathetic creatures. You talk about your brutal before initially makes them feel very empathetic. And maybe they can relate as well because maybe your brutal before is where they're at now. And by talking about your brutal before to a large group of people, a lot of people are going to probably be able to relate. A lot of people can relate with taking medications. A lot of people can relate with IBS. A lot of people can relate with being broke. Okay, so talk about that. Talk about that. Talk about what you brutal before. Gets people to relate to you. Gets, gets people to start feeling empathetic for you. Then the divine discovery comes in. And this is the thing they probably don't believe in yet or aren't yet aware of. So when you talk about the divine discovery, it's important that you really go into depth. And we'll, this is why we have to do a part two of this whole story clarity thing. We can talk about how to go into more depth on, on each stage here, but you really have to paint a picture of how you had no clue about that discovery up until the time you discovered it. And when you finally did discover it, you got to make sure you let them know like this was like a mind blowing, monumental shift, paradigm shift that went on in your brain when you first heard it. Because up until that point, you had no idea about it. Or up until that point, you never saw it that way. Or up until that point, it hadn't clicked. The penny hadn't dropped. You know, you didn't have that light bulb moment yet. The light was off. It was at that moment, through that person or through that book or through that event, like something had to happen for you to, for you to discover that. For me, it was, I was on, um, I, I just quit my job because I asked for a raise and I got turned down. So I was desperate now. I was super desperate. I went on YouTube to look for, um, look for uh, how, to, how to make money. And there was someone on YouTube who's saying, hey man, profits are better than wages. And I forget who it was, but I remember it so clearly that day. And I was, I was just like, wow, like my parents never told me this. My school never taught me this. Now I have to figure it out on my own, you know, but at least I, I, I discovered it. And it was just like, well, like that makes so much sense. No wonder why I'm broke. Because even at a hundred dollars an hour, working 24 hours a day for an entire year, still not going to make a million dollars. Right. So it just clicked for me. Like I can't do wages. I need profits. It just clicked. So that was the, that's the divine discovery aspect. You got to let them know, like for you, you didn't know it either. And then when it finally happened, it happened. So me telling this, my story to you guys right now, like when I tell you about my divine discovery about how profits are better than wages, are you guys more believers now? Are you guys more believers in it now than you were a bit before? Yes or no? Just curious, by the way. I'm just totally curious. I did not plan to ask her anything. 
clearly more interested to say the least. Okay, nice, nice, nice. Amazing. Because this is, yeah, it's just a byproduct of telling a story. Yes, I totally just had an aha now just now. Yes, exactly. Beautiful. So this is, we're, 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 we're experiencing it right now together in this group. I love it. This is why I love having these conversations because like we all have our own ahas right now, you know, it's so cool. So like think about how many people are on the internet and how many, and how few of us are in this class right now. There's like four or five of us, maybe seven, I forget how many of us. There's seven or six of us in this class. And I, 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 I told like hundreds of people about this class tonight and only six of us wanted to come. So um, you guys are like a very select core group. It's very, very cool. So anyways, once you talk about your divine discovery, the other person, as we can just, as we just clearly saw, the other person you're telling it to or the people that you're telling it to, the audience you're telling it to are also going to have their divine discovery in that moment as well, right? If, it, if you elicit the point home where it really clicked for you, you really paint that picture, it's going to click for them as well. And if it doesn't click for them as well, well, this is where the now wow comes in, okay? And if it does click for them, the now wow is just going to be the icing on the cake, baby. The now wow is like this, okay? This is where you paint a beautiful picture and you thank that divine discovery. So, for example, once I discovered that profits were better than wages, I made a vow to figure out how to make those profits. And after many years of trial and error, I finally figured it out. And now I'm living in my dream house, driving my dream car, and I never have to worry about finances ever again. It's freaking awesome. I have enough money saved up. I have enough money coming in to live wherever I want for as long as I want without stressing about money. It's freaking awesome. And I get to teach this stuff for a living now. It's so cool. And you just paint a beautiful picture of the, the now wow. Okay. And if, again, just like the divine discovery, where you want to go into detail about how you discovered and all that stuff, you also want to paint a little bit more of a picture of like how you got to where you're at now because of the divine discovery. Don't really just want to jump to it like I just did. But if you're having a short, quick conversation with someone, you could, you could totally could. If you're writing a quick caption on Instagram, you totally could. You know, brutal before. I was broke. Divine discovery. I discovered the difference between profits and wages. Now what? Now I'm driving my dream car, living in my dream house, teaching people how to make money for a full-time career. That's the now wow. So I want you guys to type in the chat now what your now wow is. And, and <coughs> it's not bragging. It's giving credit to the divine discovery. Okay. So you're thanking the divine discovery. It's all because of the divine discovery. Once I saw what a healthy lifestyle can do, I was hooked on feeling amazing and alive. Okay. What's the now wow? What, what are your results now? This is where you want to pour on the results what results do you have now are you 10 percent body fat are you super ripped are you never getting sick are you looking good are you off your medications are you not depressed anymore um do you have more energy than you had when you were 20 like what's the results that you have now this is where you where you talk about those this is the now wow And this is where you can, and this is where you can uh, let them know what you offer as well. Like I said, like now I, I have this, I have this, I have this, and now I teach this stuff for a living. And if you'd like uh, to get to my free training, you can click the link in the bio. It'll show you exactly how I did what I did. I'm going to read what you guys wrote here. Samar says, now uh, um, I can eat freely without worrying if I'll have debilitating stomach ache and fever chills. Okay, so Samar, you actually, this is a great point. So I love, I love how people make mistakes like this with, and, and, and it allows me to then make another point and teach you guys further. So Samar talked to, and it just, it just it showed, maybe showed a hole in my teaching, but I didn't say this initially. When you're painting the picture of the now wow, you don't want to talk about stomach ache, fever, and chills, debilitating, worrying. You don't want to talk about that. You don't want to talk about anything negative, even if you're saying that your life doesn't have it anymore. Just don't even talk about it. Just purely talk about the good shit. Because if I tell you 
don't slam the door loudly. All you're visualizing is a guy slamming the door loudly, right? So negatives don't work in the now out. It's all positives. So we got to say, now I can eat and digest foods beautifully. My stomach feels amazing when I eat. I can eat knowing that I'm going to be so energized after and everything's going to digest beautifully. Uh, Mr. Guzman is saying, now wow is I'm at the highest state of vitality I've ever been. Energy is out of this world, off this world. Yeah. And that's very subjective. So it's, it's good to be objective. So when I said something like, look, now I drive my dream car. I got the Tesla Model 3. I live in my dream house in Anmore, British Columbia, right by the lake. Like those are objective facts. They're undeniable. So when you say I'm at my highest state of vitality ever, I, my energy is out of this world, um, that's cool, but it can't just be subjective mentions like that. It needs to be very objective. So like now I, you know, now I, um, I don't take any medications. I run marathons. I can do 25 pull-ups. Um, like what, what are some like physical feats you can do or things that you have, right? So now, now I run a, you know, a retreat center where people come and they, you know, come to me and they lose five pounds in five days or whatever it is. Right. Yeah. So when you say, and, and, and I look handsome, Ahmad says, and I look handsome. You can say now people come up to me and tell me I look handsome. People come up to me and tell me I look handsome. People, people are sending me DMs asking me how I got my body, right? Girls that, I, that used to ignore me are now hitting me up, asking me if, if I'm free to hang out, right? Girls who were once ignoring me are now hitting me up, asking me if I want to hang out. Like, that's, that's a story. It's a now wow. Um, right, so that, that's pretty cool. Is, is this so cool? Should we move, if we, if we can move on, just type move on. If you want to hang out here for a bit more, talk about this, let me know. But if you're clear on it, just type move on. And we will move on. Move on. This is good. Awesome. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Okay. But before, do I discover it now? Wow. The hero's journey. All right, so this one's going to be interesting, okay? This one's deep. I'm going to show you the 12, there's a, there's a 12 step. There's normally 12 stages here, but I'm, I've, I'll, show, I'll show you what I've done. So I'll show you the first, first I'll show you the 12 stages to the hero's journey. Now this hero's journey, this is what they use in Hollywood, okay? So whether it's Harry Potter, Shrek, um, uh, freaking any movie ever, Forrest Gump, Zoolander, any movie ever, they use the hero's journey. Joker, Batman, Cinderella, any movie you can possibly think of that's in Hollywood uses the hero's journey. Okay? This, and that's why movies are so freaking addictive because they're always reliable. They're reliably good. Movies are reliably good, mo mostly. Because unless you don't like the main character, or unless you really don't like the theme or something. But if you like the theme and you like the character and they send them on this hero's journey, you're going to be in for a treat, right? You're going to be in for a treat. So check it out. There are normally 12 stages here. And you can use the 12 stages if you like, but I've, uh, well, I'll show, I've narrowed it down, but I'll show you in a sec. So every good movie, every good book, every good story follows these 12 stages. And when you're telling your story, you're the hero. So anytime you see it says here, the hero, that's you. Okay. So when I could, when I say like, look, I used to, I used to work at a &W flipping burgers. That's the ordinary world. Okay. That's the ordinary world. So you, maybe you want to write down right now in the chat, like what your ordinary world was. For me, my ordinary, this is back in the brutal before usually too. So for me, the ordinary world, I was flipping burgers at a and making $6 an hour. Call to adventure, okay? The initiating conflict alerts the hero to adventure. Um, 
I realized I did the math after being there for a year and I realized that the money just didn't add up. Six dollars an hour for 40 hours. That's $240 for an entire week. So I went up to my boss and I'm like, dude, can I get a raise? And he said, no. And he said, I'm, I'm afraid I can't do that. And I was pissed, you know? So I, I just got super pissed and I handed in my two weeks and I quit. So that was my, that was my, uh, oops. That was my initiating conflict. Okay. That made me quit. I left, I left, I left the, uh, the zone. I left that, that area. Um, now the refusal of the call. Now this is where the hero is hesitant to accept the call to adventure into the special world. Now I was desperate to make money. I didn't know how to do it. I really didn't want to go back to getting a job. So I, I went online and I started looking up how to make money. And I was always skeptical and always reluctant and always like, you know, hesitant to um, take up any of these online money-making opportunities. So as, and rightly so, you know, a lot of them back then, especially were, were just scams this is before social media or anything, right? So I was definitely reluctant to, to um, actually do anything with the online um, money-making thing. But I, at least I found out about it. Then meeting with mentors. So then a few years later, I was at a fruit festival and my mentors were on stage talking about how they make money online. And I was like, oh my God, this is so epic. I want to learn from these people. I really want to learn from these people. It'd be so cool just to do what they do and make money online with eBooks and coaching and courses. So a few years later, I met my mentors. And by the way, I'm, I'm like I said, I'm going through these four, I mean, there's gonna be 12 stages, but I'm just like, I'm just freestyling like what happened in my own life and it just fits in here. Your life fits into these 12 stages I'm about to show you. So keep, keep note of that. Anytime one of these comes up, like you have your own story that fits in here really well as well. Um, crossing the first threshold. So this is where the hero passes the point of no return and commits wholeheartedly to the adventure. Okay, so when, once, I, once my mentors really like, said to me like hey man it's all in the ebooks it's in the um automation it's in courses and coaching i was like okay i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it so i uh, i go home and i commit to writing an ebook my girlfriend and i start an ebook we go all in we start taking all these pictures for those recipes and we spend months creating this ebook and i'm like okay i'm all in now i'm, I'm past the point of no return i'm gonna launch this book i definitely didn't want to do it but i was like okay I'm already like, you know, halfway through it. I got to finish it now. So I committed to it wholeheartedly. I got to sell this, got to sell this thing. Um, but it was so tough, you know, super, super tough getting through that. And this is what test, you know, this is where you get tested with, and you make allies and enemies and stuff. And um, during my ebook creation process, you know, I had to get, I had to ask friends for help and suggestions and didn't know what the hell to do. Uh, one of my mentors had to come help me and set it up on my website. And I just didn't know what I was doing. It was really, really tough just to create a freaking book, you know? Um, and then approach the innermost cave. This is where you, um, you do something really scary. And the hero draws closer to the, both the heart of the special world and the heart of the story. This is where I, uh, I guess I decided to just freaking launch it, just sell it. Like it was really scary, but I was like, I just gotta launch it. I just have to launch it. So I launched it and crickets. This is the ordeal. The hero faces the greatest challenge yet and undergoes a process of death and rebirth. So it was crickets. Like nothing didn't really work. I was like, man, all that work for nothing? This sucks. Um, and then there's the reward. The hero expense, experiences the consequences of surviving the death and obtains the object of their quest. And in this case, I guess, once I found out it didn't work, then I, oops, then I asked Joey, I'm like, hey, Joey, why doesn't this, why didn't my, why didn't, why did my ebook not sell? And it was through it not selling that I was able to find out how to actually really crush it online. He's like, oh, dude, he's not using funnels. You're just trying to sell it on a WordPress website. And so I got this big, like, massive aha moment. Like, oh, my God, funnels. Like, that's what I need in my life, right? So um, the road back, this is where I get into funnels. And um, you get into funnels. And uh, this is called the road back. Europe begins their return to the ordinary world, but a final trial faces them. So get into funnels and 
I really like, I'm like, hey, funnels are cool, but like, I don't know where to begin. I, I didn't have any help with knowing how to do funnels. Like he told me how to, he told me to do funnels, but I didn't know how to do them. So I, I start learning I'm from the funnel community. I start learning from the funnel community about how it's done. And um, this is the hero emerges in the special world, changed by their experiences and wisdom they've gained. Um, and I guess, yeah, like in this part of the story, it would be where like, hey, I learned a shitload from this funnel community. It was awesome. And then I put my book on there and it sounds a lot easier. Um, and I ended up, well, I ended up making a 30 day rough food challenge at course, actually. That's what happened. So I get into funnels. I, I create a 30 day raw food challenge and then I launched that and then it sells really, really well. I'm like, wow, this is amazing. And then the return with the elixir, the hero returns to the ordinary world with their special object, which they use to make ordinary world better. So now I come back to the ordinary world and I'll let people know like, Hey man, I actually just found out how to sell online courses and I can teach you how to do it too. So that's like a drawn out big ass version of like the hero's journey. But it it works. Like I just filled in my life experiences with this framework and it worked really well. So if you want to tell a story, follow this framework. And by the way, if you guys want all the slides, if you want the replay of this, if you want all the, um, the, um, my special notes behind the scenes as well, things I haven't even included in this yet, send me a DM on Instagram and um, I will hit you up with those. Okay. Um, so I've trimmed it down to nine. I've trimmed it. You don't need to go through all 12 like that. Some of those were, those were a bit like um, unnecessary, I think. So I've trimmed it down to nine. These are the nine stages I like to follow. So the number one is the ordinary. It's, a lot of them are very similar, but number nine is the ordinary. This is where your life can suck. Okay, be uncomfortable. Either way, it's ordinary, kind of lame. Nothing. Special. All right. Stage two is the calling. Actually, let me show you something really cool. Let me show you something really cool. Exit full screen. All right, can you guys see that? Let's let's look at let's look at um, let's look at all this in an actual movie form. Okay, so let's follow let's follow Harry Potter. Okay, at the top, the red. Ignore all the other lines, but let's just follow Harry Potter. Harry Potter is the ordinary, right? Harry Potter lives in the cupboard under the stairs of Four Privet Drive. This is the ordinary world. His call to adventure is when Harry receives a letter to attend Hogwarts School of Witchcraft and Wizardry. Remember, like, Hog, uh, Hagrid shows up and is like, Harry, you're a wizard. And Harry's like, and he refused it. Harry, the, the hero always refuses the call to adventure initially. Um, or they're very reluctant and hesitant. So Harry's like, you don't believe he's a wizard. And he's like, no, that's not me. You got the wrong guy. And Hagrid's like, no, 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 it's you. And Hagrid then meets, you know, Hagrid like, shows that he's a mentor to Harry. Takes him to Diagon Alley where Harry purchases his school equipment. Then Harry crosses crosses into the threshold. Remember how like he like has to go through the freaking wall? Like he like literally crosses through. He goes through that wall, the train station. He goes through and he learns about his parents' death in the hands of Voldemort. Um, and then he starts getting to, into Hogwarts and he makes all these friends and enemies along the way, right? He meets Malfoy and he meets you know Hermione and, and Ron. Um, and then this is where they get ready to prepare for to approach the innermost cave. And Ron and Hermione plan to get the Philosopher's Stone before Snape does. Then they got to make the plan. Okay, cool. Now they got to go through it. And this is where the big ordeal happens. This is where Harry, Ron, and Hermione have to overcome all the obstacles in the way. And it's like all the action. Like bam, 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 bam. All the action happens. Then... The reward is Harry then enters the room where the Philosopher's Stone is hidden. He's like, ah, I got the reward, right? Um, and then he's got to make the road back. And the road back is tough. Just because you get the reward doesn't mean it's over. 
to get the reward. But now Harry has to face um, Professor Quirrell, who has been hosting Voldemort in his body. And they have a big fight. And then Harry ends up waking up in the hospital. And Dumbledore explains that he beat Voldemort because of the love from his mother. And at the end of the day, Harry returns back to Four Privet Drive for the summer, happy to know that he belongs at Hogwarts. Pretty cool, right? Pretty, pretty cool. It, every story follows the same thing. Star Wars with Luke Skywalker, The Matrix with Thomas Anderson, Spider-Man with Peter Parker, Lion King with Simba. So this is a basic one, okay? It's probably the earliest one. Oh, no, Star Wars are earlier, but Lion King. It's like Simba. It starts off when they're, in the, you know, they're in the, uh, oops, sorry. It starts off when they're in Africa, in the, in the plains of Africa, and Simba shows the whole earth land and everything, and it shows Simba. We know that Simba's the heir to the throne. And then Scar kills Mufasa, which is the call to adventure, and then tells Simba to leave the Pride Lands. They leave and never come back. Simba leaves. And then, you know, Simba um, doesn't want to go, but he has to. He's been forced to go, but he like, so he bounces. He's really, really scared and alone there. And then what happens next? He meets his mentor. He meets Taman and Pumbaa, and they introduce him to the Simba Life in the Jungle. Kuna Matata, right? They're the one who taught him that. And then he has to cross the first threshold. This is where um, he embraces the Hakuna Matata life, and, and despite uh, at first like refusing it, you know he really didn't. He thought it was dumb at first. He's like, I don't want to live this life. I got to go back. But they're like, no, no, just chill, man. Life's good here. So he does, and then he has to crush. Um, he has to then meet a bunch of tests and enemies and allies. And one of the tests was like he meets Nala, and the two of them they actually fall in love. And this is where you know he meets um, makes a, a strong ally there. Okay, so that's that. Sorry, I, people keep joining, or it says people keep logging in, logging in. I have to accept them for some reason. I don't know why. Um, so they fall in love, and then they have to go back to the they have to enter the innermost cave, which is like the scary part. And Nala asks Simba, "Hey, Simba, come back to the Pride Lands with me and and take the throne from Scar." And Simba's like, "No, I like it here, but it's too scary there." And she's like, "No, you got to do it. You got to do it." He's like, "Ah, oh, I really don't want to." Um, so, but she ends up convincing him to come back. And then as they approach the innermost cave, um, as, as they're thinking about it, Simba must choose. He has to make the choice, you know? It's a big ordeal. Like, should you do it or should you not? He ends up making the choice. Yeah, let's do it. I'm going to save the kingdom. I'm going to save the kingdom. Um, because the reward, I guess in this case, it says um, Mufasa's ghost, which is Simba's dad, Tell Simba, he's like, Simba, you can do it. You got to return to the Pride Lands and take over. So Simba's all pumped up, goes back, returns to the Pride Land and faces Scar, which is like the big scary guy. And then the resurrection happens. Simba comes back and learns that Scar kills his father and throws Scar off the cliff. And then the return home is Simba sends the Pride and reclaims the throne. So every single movie follows the same freaking plot line. Is that pretty cool or what? Pretty, did you, did you guys, is that, is that, is that, um, is this an aha moment for you guys? This is an aha moment. Just type aha. And if that's lame that every movie follows the same thing, just type boring. I think it's freaking awesome. Cause then, you know, like, Hey, there's, there's just a script you got to follow. Okay, so I've narrowed it down to nine, and we'll, we'll go into those right now. Nice, Alex had an aha moment, sweet. So the number one is ordinary, right? We talked about that. Next is the calling. So your life's chilling, then you get called, hey, call to adventure. But you always refuse it. You're like, nah, like that adventure's like, no, nah, it's not for me. I'm, 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 I'm cool in the ordinary, like life's good here. That's all I know. But then you, you experience some clarity. You're like, actually, wait, like maybe that is really cool maybe maybe i can do that um and then you start you go for it you, you start taking you know collecting resources and you start going for it um and then you, of course what happens next you face challenges and you start going for it you face challenges and you actually end up experiencing a massive loss you know you have to pay a heavy price for your um for, for your uh, for your journey that you've gone and you're tempted to give it up and end it you know this is where you feel heartbroken or devastated and you feel like this is the end, like you can't go any further. Always happens at stage seven. Then stage eight is the rebirth. 
or you gain more clarity, new clarity, and you experience a renewal of motivation. It's really like, no, I gotta do it. Gotta finish the quest. Your confidence goes through the roof, your vision is crystal clear, and you freaking get it. And then number nine is you win. You accomplish the goal, you become better than ever, and everything was worth it. Your life is now different, your perspective has now changed, and you're in a position to help others with the same journey. This is so freaking awesome. I hope you guys know that because you can insert your story here and it will be awesome. So Alex has a story. Samara has a story. Ahmed has a story. Everyone has a story. Your mom and dad have a story. They can insert into these stages right here and have it turn out awesome. Okay. Now let me ask you this right now. What's the best way to get better at using stories? What's the, get, what's the best way? What, what would you guys say to that? What would your answer be? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's it. Making them. Exactly. Use them often. Exactly. Write them. Speak them. Use them often. All right. Use them often. Now, before we go, I want to give you guys five elements of awesome stories. Is that is that okay if I if I over deliver a bit and just give you I'm uh, sorry, the four elements of amazing stories? Is it okay if I give you those? Four elements? Okay. So these are the four elements that are really going to help you spice up your story so you're not boring and, and not making people fall asleep and thinking, oh, God, this person doesn't know how to tell a good story. All right, so the following four elements. You include these into your stories over time. You get better and better and better at them. It's a skill for sure. So check it out. First one is dialogue. If possible, add dialogue to your story. Who said what? So remember how I was telling you about how I called Hannah up to come to the lake? And I said, Hannah, you know, we're going to the lake with a bunch of friends. You should really come. It'd be awesome. We want to get a big group of people together and jump in the cold lake. And then Hannah says, oh, I can't do it. I'm sick. Right? And I tell her, Hannah, I understand how you feel. I felt the same way. But what I found was that by going in the cold lake, I feel freaking awesome. And you know what Hannah said back? She said, wow, really? What time are you guys going? I'll come. Boom, I use dialogue right there. I'm telling you a story and I use dialogue. I'm like imitating her and I'm imitating myself. Okay, so use dialogue. It's so, rather than saying, I called Hannah and I told her she should come and then she told, and then she told me that she couldn't come and then I told her, no, you really should come and then she said, okay, I'll come. Like, <coughs> that's not dialogue. That's just like fact. You want to use stories. You want to use dialogue in your stories. I mean, use dialogue. Imitate what somebody said. So my mom was like, Ted, you should go to bed so you don't get sick. Not, my mom told me to go to bed. Right? Like I tell, I, I, I imitate her. I say what she said in her voice if I can, if possible. Okay? If possible. Next is emotion. Every great story relates to feeling something. Who felt what? This is so important to elicit emotion. In fact, I should have put this as the fourth one, not the second one, because you guys might forget if it's the second one, but it's the most important thing. It's like, if nothing else, make sure you're making someone feel emotion. At the end of the day, the purpose of story is to elicit emotion. What's the purpose of story? To elicit emotion. Okay. Great way to do this is to let somebody know how you felt. Okay. So guys, I was on the edge of the plane and my heart was pounding out of my chest. I was so afraid. I was looking down. I was going to jump. I had the parachute on my back. I could feel the wind. Um, I, was, I was looking down. I was, we were freaking like 10,000 feet above the air and I was so scared. I really didn't want to jump. My palms were sweating. I was grabbing onto the railing. It was shaking. Everyone behind me was yelling at me, jump, jump, jump. And I really didn't want to jump. And I had my parachute ready, but I really didn't want to go. I was about to vomit. I felt so sick. I was so nervous. I felt like I could pass out and die and faint. I was so scared. I was looking down. I finally just jumped. And all of a sudden, I felt nothing. I just fell and fell and fell and fell. And next thing I knew, I woke up and I was, it was all a dream. It was all a dream. I woke up and I panicked and I freaked out. It was all a dream. Did you guys feel a little bit of emotion there? When I, when I said that, Ahmad says yes. Okay, cool. For sure. Alex said for sure. Okay, sweet. So, I used a little bit of dialogue there as well, all right? I was like, everyone's yelling, jump, 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 right? So I just used emotion and dialogue, and you guys were like, yeah, I felt something, okay? That's how cool storytelling is. That's how cool is you get people to feel stuff. 
And then at the end, you could say something like, um, you could, at, the end, at the end of a story, this is where you pitch your product. This is where you make your offer. This is, but after that, you say like, and this is why I recommend, you know, whatever parachute that you sell. This is why I recommend uh, the freaking Ted car parachute because it works every single time. You never need to worry about it. And boom, 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 whatever. I don't know. But you insert a solution to the problem that you had because we're experiencing in the story. Okay. So that's that. And then the other element is the element of surprise. Every great story has an unexpected surprise or twist. What was revealed? In this case, the story I just made up, I woke up and it was all a dream. Horrible surprise, but um, surprise nonetheless. So ideally, every story has a great surprise in it. Surpl unexpected surprise or twist. So at the start of this story class today, I told you about the story about how I was picking berries. And I saw this beautiful woman walk up. That's kind of ordinary. Um, but then a bear came out of nowhere. Right, I wasn't prepared for the bear. Scared the shit of me. I had to run away, and uh, lost the girl. But a bear, man, of all things, came out of nowhere. That's an unexpected plot twist right there. So add some surprises to your stories. Those are always good. And the right amount of detail. Okay, every great story includes the right amount of detail. Not too much, not too little. So I didn't say like, hey, I was on the plane the other day and I didn't want to jump off, but I jumped off anyway. And then when I finally did jump off, I actually woke up in a dream. Like, that's so lame. That's such a lame story. I could have just spent an extra minute telling it to you how I told you earlier, and it would have been way better, right? So if I just say, hey, I was driving the store the other day, and I got out and I bought this banana, and I drove back home, and that was it. Like, that's really horrible detail, man. But if I, if I want to tell a story about how I drove to the store, bought a banana, and came back home, I could be like, dude, I woke up one morning. I, my appetite was ravenous. I was so hungry. I looked around the whole kitchen, couldn't find anything open my cupboards, open my fridge, nothing. And I was like, mom, we have any fruit? And she's like, no, you ate it all. I was like, oh my God. So then um, I, I go downstairs and I, I get in the car and I'm like, you know what? I just got to drive to the store. So I'm driving to the store, hands are on the steering wheel, I'm looking out, I pump my favorite tunes, pump some M&M. And um, I look to my left and for some weird reason, there's like this pop-up market on the side of the road selling bananas. So I get out and uh, I'm feeling a bit apprehensive. I'm like a bit reluctant to buy bananas from these guys. They look like, like gangsters or something. Um, and then you know what they do? They're like, dude, we got to buy one, get one free deal on these bananas. And I can't tell you, I was so happy to hear that deal because I only had a dollar. So I spent a dollar and was able to get two bananas back. I was so stoked. I knew my mom was going to be happy when I came back home. I'd have food on the table for both of us. So I'd get back in the car, drive home. I'm like, Mom, I got bananas. She's like, oh, my God, thanks, son. You're the greatest. And then we'd get home, and I'd peel the bananas, and they were nice and ripe, and it smelled great, and we both enjoyed a banana for breakfast. That was a right amount of detail, some surprise, some emotion, and some dialogue. Little story right there, but again, a horrible freestyle story. Stories are typically best when you've written them out ahead of time, uh, or you've at least told them a few different times as well. So that's it for now. Uh, if you guys liked this class and you want to come to the next class, all about hooks. Well, sorry, the next class we might go into part two on stories. I'm not sure. I need to decide. The, the next, next class is going to be about hooks. Um, we're going to go into depth and detail on like how to actually stop the scroll, how to get people's attention. Um, and uh, how to then use those hooks then tell our stories. So let me stop the share. Cool. Um, yeah. Am I on webcam still? I guess so. I guess so. Cool. Alex says, dude, legend, love this. This is golden. Thank you for helping us. This is priceless. Awesome, man. I appreciate that. If you guys want to send a testimonial to my Instagram, that'd be awesome. I'll use that screenshot of that. I'll put it up on the, the funnel to help um, get more people into the next class. That'd be much appreciated. If you do send me a testimonial on Instagram, do send me an Instagram. I'll give you a copy of all the slides here as well as um, those nine stages of stories as well as the 12 stages of stories as well. You guys can refer back to um, 
as well as some as well as like two or three really 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 good YouTube videos that you can watch to learn more about stories as well. So this class was like my interpretation of stories, how I like to do it. But I'll send you a couple of really good YouTube videos as well uh, that you can watch and study and learn from. Uh, in addition to this, because I think the more you learn about stories, um, the more you're going to want to start using them in your sales and in your life in general. Uh, so cool. Yeah, so thrilling to see all my potential through these webinars. Dude, if you could send that in a testimonial form uh, on the Instagram DM, that'd be epic. I'd really appreciate that. Um, and same with Alex saying, dude, this is golden. Thank you for helping. It's priceless. I love that. Thank you so much. I appreciate that a lot. Um, yeah, this is just really, really fun for me. I could talk about this stuff all day long. I do. I do talk about it all day long. Um, but yeah, can't wait. Got some really cool stuff coming up in the future. And yeah, we'd love to keep teaching you guys. So next class is either going to be stories part two or hooks. I don't know. But I got the shirt on the hook story offer. Right? Because at the end of the day, man, if you can't catch people's attention, who the heck is going to listen to your story? You get the best offer in the world, the best story in the world, but if you can't get their attention, if you can't get them to actually know who you are, like you can't tell your story, you can't make your offer. So here's the truth about this class. Like this class, we had what, like freaking three, four people here today, which is what I expected because I didn't throw out enough hooks. I was like, my life, because of this whole Corona thing, not because of my personal health thing, but because of business going on right now with my festival, um, I, uh, I, I, my focus has not been on these classes and it's like, I just hardly threw any hooks. I think I sent out like one email, uh, made like one post on Instagram about it, like super weak on the promotion, super weak on, on the hook throwing up. But next class we'll talk about hooks, talk about how to drive traffic, how to boost your following. Um, and I'm not sure when that class is going to happen, but uh, it should happen sometime this week. Um, but yeah, I would love to teach you guys so much more. I've got a lot of really cool stuff happening here and, uh, just want to keep giving, 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 giving. So if you're interested in the next class, defos, hit me up and I'll send you a link. I'll send you an email to everyone as well. Let them know. But next class, either on hooks or stories part two. Let me know what you want. All right. Peace. Thanks so much. And uh, adios. Ciao for now.